Well, hello, welcome back to the Shade Tree Machinist uh, shop. Uh, my name is John, and uh, this is the final uh, episode of uh, installation of the DR Pro Pro's uh, DRO system for the uh, mill. It's a four axis uh, DRO, uh, which has an axis also on the quill along with the knee. And uh, I basically, uh, uh, show you a little bit around it, uh, let you see it. Uh, also, I'll, I'll turn it on. And uh, <clears throat> kind of show you just a, a little bit of the functions of it. Uh, uh, specifically, the, the summing of the, uh, the Z-axis, which I, I really like. I know there's been times before where uh, I could have used that. so. Now, now I've got it and I can when that time arises again. Uh, so basically uh, uh, it was a good project. It took a while. Uh, also being the first time I'm actually trying to uh, do a good video to put on YouTube. Uh, I got a, a new uh, uh, respect for the ones out there that does this because uh, it's fairly time consuming. Uh, Especially for somebody that don't know a whole lot about doing the videos, so uh, hope it turns out all right. Uh, so basically, uh, kind of show you around quick, real quick. I'll uh, take this off the stand and I'll take you around. Right here is the uh, the quill reader uh, installed. I had to make uh, some modifications to to it to get it to work. These are the brackets that I that I installed. Uh, made and put on uh, modified the bracket that came with it uh, to give me a little bit more room so my uh, manual crank will will work and it works just fine uh, also see it traveling up and down uh, that was the first the first th item I installed uh, next item I'll bring you around and end up putting the uh, the x-axis scale on that's this with a cover on it uh, it turned out pretty good that was a uh, fairly simple compared to the others that I installed very straightforward had to do some uh, minor milling on the bracket that brackets down here I don't know if you can see that it's right here uh, had to mill it just a little bit to bring the scale into in the tolerances it need or the reader into the scale uh, the next item, the next scale installed with the uh, y-axis scale. This one uh, is fairly straightforward also. I was able to use the, the stock brackets that came with it. Didn't have to do any modifications to it at all. The only modification I had to do was like I did with all of them was the cover. I had to mill that lip off. And also I had to mill this section down a little bit so it would clear this bracket. Because this one on this scale <clears throat> or this reader, the reader actually moves instead of the scale on the x-axis, the scale moves and the reader stays put. All other axis, it's the, the reader that actually moves. <clears throat> and then the last one I put on that I kind of showed uh, in a previous video was, was the uh, uh, the knee z-axis scale. This was fairly time consuming uh, due to uh, took me a while to get this line lined in because this surface here has got an angle to it and it's also angled back in this direction also. I had to make this block because uh, the stock block that come with it was too thin. This is an inch and plus uh, also with the grub screws that I added to it it still had to bring it out just a little bit uh, to get it lined in. But it turned out good. And it, it works good. Also you can see kind of how I, how I ended up attaching the uh, cables where they're not hanging loose all over the place and plus there's a lot of excess uh, I just rolled them up and zip tied them up here on this arm the pivot arm for the the DRO computer portion <clears throat> I just mounted it to the side <clears throat> of the head unit I'll bring you back over here. I was kind of wanting to 
show you. I'll try and get you lined up here. I'm looking at the video through my iPhone. <clears throat> so basically what I was going to do is show you the part that I really like about this is the uh, having both the z-axis on the quill which in the book they call this the u-axis and then the z-axis uh, being the uh, knee uh, portion of the mill. Uh, when you first turn it on which is z-axis is the bottom one it automatically it'll I don't know if you can that picks up or not but it's actually reading but when I move uh, the quill, it's not reading at all. At all. Because most of the time, you end up uh, needing their readings on the knee, and that's that's default. It's very simple to change. All I do is hit Z, and then Z0, and it changes it now. It's the uh, quill. I don't know if you, I can't tell if that's picking up or not through my phone. But it's reading now. If he's wanting to uh, drill in or uh, into a material uh, like a blind hole and you only go so deep you, know, you got the reading it's a lot better the scale that you have on quills most of them I've ever seen you can't really they're not very accurate can't read them the Z now does not work now the but it does have the option where it'll read from both and it sums them to give you a accurate reading and basically, let me go ahead and take it back to, I just hit Z and Z0 to take it back. Now it's the knee. The quill is not reading. But if I want to end up taking it uh, to do the sum, you hit the function key. You hit the number 6, which is the right arrow on this. I hit it, uh, I think it's three times. And then they'll come up with sum or what they say sum. It's SU and then some funny numbers. I guess can't make an M. Uh, once that comes up, you hit enter once. And then it should say on. If it's not, then you toggle it to turn it on, but it'll automatically go to on. And then hit enter again. And now it's ready. <clears throat> now the Q, or the Z, right here is reading. I'll leave it right there and then I can move the knee and it's also reading. Now, with it being a function command, anytime you turn the unit off and turn it back on, it, goes, it reverts back to default, which is just the knee, which that's fine. It don't take long. I finally memorized that function to get to it pretty quick if I need it. So that's, that's fairly handy uh, set up. Plus it's got a lot of other the boat hole circle and the radius and a uh, multitude of things that uh, I don't know a whole lot about but I'm going to be reading up and learning it so I can use it when that time uh, comes up where it'd be handy and make the job a little quicker. Uh, I've always wanted one and uh, I'd like to thank DR Pros. It's a good product especially the mag they are magnetic scales. You can cut them to length. Uh, it was very simple. I only had to cut one I only had to cut the uh, the one on the Z. The rest of them, they was able to fit without cutting them at all. Uh, so it worked really good. Uh, it wasn't very difficult other than some uh, some things I had to think up because it, uh, I, you know, I guess they can't come with every type of bracket for every type of machine that's out there because they're all a little different. But uh, it wasn't that difficult. It was a little time consuming, but uh, didn't make a few small mistakes, but I was able to correct them. Uh, on the brackets that I was doing. I didn't do anything to mess up the, the piece of equipment that I got from DRO Pros. Uh, but if, uh, uh, if you're looking for a DRO, that's, I recommend it. I like it. And uh, oh, they don't even know I'm doing this, so I ain't getting anything out of this. I'm just giving you my opinion. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I hope you like the videos. I'm going to try to start doing more. Uh, when I have the chance, work a lot of times will get in the way. I won't be able to put videos like some of them do out there. They, they end up putting them out. I'll probably get up, get quicker with the videos, uh, and then that'll help me uh, help me a lot. But I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna try to do some more. Uh, something I can tell you whenever I, I get a chance. Uh, my one of my lays. I got two lays. I got a 1954 Monarch. It's a it's a fairly large one. 22 and a half inch swing. Uh, 
uh, it's got a tailstock on it, it's fairly heavy. You can move it, but if you want to uh, move it just a little bit, it's hard to. They, they normally come with a hand crank to crank it to do fine adjustments. It didn't come with it, it was long gone, I guess, from years ago. Somebody lost it, misplaced it, I don't know. But when I, when I purchased it, it didn't have it. So uh, I, found, I was planning on making a gear uh, for it, but uh, ended up finding a gear through Enco. Uh, it was, but it's on back order. I ordered it, but it's on back order when it comes in. Uh, it's a very reasonable price. Uh, a lot cheaper than it would of me buying the cutter I would need to cut that that uh, uh, that gear. Uh, it's fairly large a gear as far as tooth size. It's uh, not a very large in diameter. Once I get that in, uh, I'm going to video me uh, making the uh, the arm and the crank and everything for it, so I can put that back into service and where I can do some minute adjustments to it. Uh, so I hope y'all enjoyed this. Uh, if uh, any uh, suggestions that you may have that would help me along, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, constructive, I welcome constructive cr cr criticism. Uh, uh, so please let me know, and uh, I'll see where we can, where I can take it. Uh, I, sh I really enjoy doing this type of work. It's a hobby to me, uh, like I've said before, and uh, I thank you. Oh yeah, and something else I was wanting to tell you is. Uh, Something else I always like doing is uh, I've done woodworking for many years, probably over 30 years, uh, and it's a hobby too. Uh, I've got a little woodworking shop, and I want to start doing some videos on it, but I don't want to put them on this YouTube site. I'm going to try to make, make another one to figure out how to do it, and I'm going to call it uh, Shade Tree uh, Woodworker, uh, kind of a spill off of this. And, uh, probably do some of that so anybody that's interested in woodworking uh, eventually I'll I'll have that side up and start doing some of that so appreciate it and y'all have a good day